Chase back with you once again, and this is uh, probably going to be our last show prior to Christmas coming up here. Uh, I'm like a lot of you, I want to take some time to celebrate Christmas and uh, kind of wind down a little bit, so uh, this is going to be the last show that we do before the Christmas holiday. Of course, you guys know how I am when I say that. Uh, I always reserve the right, if somebody in Washington really makes me mad, to rush out another show, but I'm not planning on doing that. Uh, so with that in mind, I wanted to take a moment right at the top here uh, to everybody out there who has uh, been watching this show. The audience has been growing steadily as we've been doing these shows. Those of you who have been watching it, providing me feedback, arguing with me a little bit, uh, and that great little community that's out there, uh, I wanted to take a moment to say Merry Christmas to all of you, or, or Happy Hanukkah to those of you who celebrate that, or, or heck, even those of you who who celebrate fictitious holidays like Festivus or Kwanzaa. Uh, Merry Festivus or Holly Jolly Kwanzaa to you. Uh, I hope everybody has a happy and prosperous and fun holiday season, Christmas season to all of you. So, with that in mind, since we're all kind of in that wind down mode this week, we're all about a week away from Christmas, less than a week actually, and we're all looking forward to the presents and the family and everything else, most of us probably aren't thinking a whole lot about politics right now. So today, I did not want to discuss a political topic like we normally do. Instead, I wanted to talk about a little bit more of a cultural kind of thing, or a pop culture kind of thing, sports kind of thing. And it's something you undoubtedly have heard at least something about in the media, and I want to give you my take on it. I want to talk about Tim Tebow today, the Denver Broncos starting quarterback, Tim Tebow. He's uh, had a fairly successful season, more successful than a lot of people thought he would. And uh, as a result of that, the mere fact that he's out there and is a starting quarterback and is having some success is really controversial in some circles. And I'm not really talking about sports circles. I'm talking about in, in the media, in the press, in the pop culture world. A lot of those people don't really like Tim Tebow, and we'll talk about why. First of all, let me go on record in telling you that I do like Tim Tebow. I think there's a lot of positive things about him. Now... Undoubtedly, you've heard the controversy behind Tebow regarding his uh, religious beliefs and his portrayal of that. Let me start off by telling you that there's actually two reasons that I like Tim Tebow. One of them does involve the portrayal of his religious beliefs and so forth. We'll get to that in a second. But there's another reason that I like Tim Tebow that, that isn't really part of the controversy. I'm a little bit of a football nerd. I'm definitely a football fan, but a little bit of a football nerd. And as a football nerd, I oftentimes get upset with a lot of these people in the NFL, a lot of these uh, talent scouts and personnel people, uh, and the way they go about their scouting and, and the way that they go about analyzing talent in the National Football League and potential talent. There is this real sense in the NFL that these guys who are in charge of, of talent analysis and, and identifying talent and figuring out who's going to be where your Mel Kuypers of the world, uh, there's a real sense that these guys have kind of over-intellectualized the game a little bit. And they, they've gotten it to the point that they think for every position on a football field, there are certain measurable statistics and measurable characteristics that must be adhered to, otherwise you cannot play in the National Football League. And for a quarterback, you have to be a certain height, and you have to have a certain 40-yard 40, 40 dash time, and you have to have certain throwing mechanics, and everything has to be quantified, and everything has to be just so. And likewise, for the other positions, you know, a wide receiver, you've got to run a, a 40 yard dash time of, to this certain level, and if it's above that, well, you can't play in the NFL. And if you're an offensive lineman, you have to bench press this certain amount of weight X number of times, and if you can't do that, well, you can't play in the NFL. And they've over intellectualized this to the point that they have tried to break the game down entirely into to numbers. And what they overlook or what they've forgotten is that in football, as well as in life, there are certain intrinsic characteristics that cannot be measured and cannot be quantified and cannot be broken down to a number, but nonetheless are extremely important. In football, you cannot measure heart. You cannot measure a will to win. You cannot measure leadership capabilities. I would argue you can't measure them in any other aspect of life either. And so your talent people in the NFL, the as academic as they try to be, they overlook those, those type of aspects. So they just aren't important because we can't break them down into a number and we can't put them on a clipboard somewhere. Well, Tim Tebow flies in the face of all of that. He doesn't have the mechanics that the NFL people think a quarterback should have. 
And he, he doesn't read progressions the way an NFL talent scout thinks that a quarterback should read progressions. He plays a different ball game. He's a big guy. He, he's got a lot of agility. He'll, he'll roll out of trouble. He'll run away from the tackles and onto the sideline and keep a play going and then find an open receiver. It's a different type of ball game that Tebow plays. And I really enjoy watching it. And let's face it, I, I'm one of those old school guys that is not a real big fan of the forward pass. I mean, I, I forget who it was that said it. it it's been attributed to the old Texas coach, Darrell Royal, and I've also heard it attributed to the old Ohio State coach, Woody Hayes. But there's an old phrase out there that only three things can happen when you throw the football, and two of them are bad. I, I believe in that. What can I say? So I like a quarterback that will run first and throw second, and Tebow's that kind of guy. So there's the football nerd reason of why I like Tim Tebow. I love the idea that his type of quarterback is turning the NFL establishment on its ear. And make no mistake, over the next five or ten years, you're going to see a lot more of those type of quarterbacks in the NFL, if for no other reason than the colleges have really slowed down and, and kind of stopped their development of those old school, drop back, feet rooted to the ground quarterbacks that the NFL talent people just love. Sorry to tell you, there's not a lot of those guys in college anymore. They're not being recruited, they're not being developed. So about five or ten years, all you're going to have left is a bunch of Tebos. That's where the game's going. Okay, there's a football nerd reason I like Tebow, but on to the more substantive reason, and the reason that there's such controversy over him. The reason a lot of people don't like Tim Tebow out in the media and out in popular culture, and the reason it's such a controversy, is that Tebow, whenever he scores a touchdown, he, he makes a pretty obvious signal or an obvious show of his Christian faith. He, you know, point up, or he'll, he'll kind of genuflect a bit. There's even a name for it called the Tebow. And whenever a, a member of the media talks to him, he very often invokes his faith and mentions that he's a follower of Jesus Christ, he's a strong Christian, and you can't really hear a Tim Tebow interview where he doesn't mention that. And those two facts are why so many people absolutely despise Tim Tebow. And, and they're just freaked out that he's having any kind of success in the National Football League. And there are people that are flat out offended that Tim Tebow is doing what he's doing and saying what he's saying and making the, the genuflections after he scores and that kind of thing and making such a, a public pronouncement of his faith that that is somehow something that we're supposed to uh, that we're supposed to discourage. But I don't agree with that. And I don't agree that people should be criticizing him for it. I think we should be encouraging Tim Tebow to do what he's doing. Now, to tell you why, let's take a, a look at a bigger picture here. Instead of just sports, let's expand this to pop culture and entertainment and that kind of thing. If you think back in sports, pop culture, we oftentimes will see people that make a, a very upfront statement about who they are and a statement that might be considered controversial, and that when these people make that statement, most of the time, the media will be right there to say, that's so courageous. They're really speaking out for their cause, and that's so courageous, and we need more of that. Think back to Muhammad Ali back in the 60s when he changed his religion to Muslim, and he changed his name to Muhammad Ali. There was Howard Cosell right there saying, well, ladies and gentlemen, we need to encourage Muhammad Ali, and we need to... Look up to Muhammad Ali for what he's doing. Okay, it's the worst Howard Cosell impression you ever heard. Uh, my bad. Think back to the 1968 Olympics, and you had those Olympic uh, runners that did the Black Power salute when they were on the medal stand. And there was a meeting again saying how courageous that was. Expand it beyond sports. Let's look at people like uh, Ellen DeGeneres and Rosie O'Donnell, who came out of the closet and made a public pronouncement that they were gay. And then from that point on, their entire career was about them being gay. You know, it's not like Rosie O'Donnell came out in an interview somewhere and then it was never talked about again. No, pretty much her whole career has been wrapped around, oh, she's the gay talk show host, or Ellen DeGeneres, she's the gay comedian. That became a central part of their whole career. And we are told the whole time that it will, what Ellen DeGeneres did was so courageous. What Rosie O'Donnell did, by golly, that was so courageous. And if you raised any objection to their message, well, you were instantly labeled a troglodyte, or worse. You were told, you, you can't object to that. These people are just being who they are. And we need to allow them to express themselves. Well, if that's true, if Muhammad Ali can come out and express himself as he wanted to, if Ellen DeGeneres, Rosie O'Donnell, Clay Aiken, if the, the Olympic runners in 68 can uh, express themselves how they want, and we're supposed to accept that, tolerate that and even encourage that, 
then why should we also not accept, encourage, and tolerate Tim Tebow expressing himself and showing who he is? What Tim Tebow is doing takes no less courage than what Rosie O'Donnell did, or what Ellen DeGeneres did, or Clay Aiken, or Muhammad Ali, or any of those other people. What he's doing shows as much courage. And hey, I know it gets on some people's nerves, and I'll admit that if I were in Tebow's position, I might not be as quick to uh, you know, make such constant pronouncements about it, because let's face it, I, I'm not that kind of personality. I'm a little bit more laid back on religion. Not laid back, but I, I, I don't like to talk about it in public as much as some other people do. But Tebow clearly is comfortable with that. So if he's comfortable with it, why shouldn't he be able to do it? What this all boils down to is not that Tim Tebow is expressing himself, it's that he's expressing an opinion that the media doesn't like. They're all for the gays coming out and, and talking about whatever they want to and, and giving a message to mainstream America, but heaven forbid a Christian do it. That's what they're objecting to. But like him or not, like Tim Tebow or not, agree with Tim Tebow or not, let's look at one more thing. When you look at what we've seen in the National Football League over the last few years, and in sports in general in the last few years, is what Tebow is doing, is that something that we should really consider to be that big of a deal? I mean, think about it. Pac-Man Jones is shooting up strip clubs. Okay. Ben Roethlisberger is having sexual relations that might have been forced in a bathroom with some chick. Okay. Uh, you've got Ray Carruth a few years back killing somebody. <laughs> wow. You've got Leonard Little here in St. Louis, uh, you know, getting DUIs left and right while he was here. I mean, my goodness. With all of that going on, Tim Tebow's what we should be offended about? Really? That's the guy we should keep our kids from watching? Ah, uh, it's okay if our kid watches Pac-Man Jones, you know. It's okay if our kid watches Ben Roethlisberger, you know, the rapist, but... <laughs> that Tebow, we got to keep Junior away from watching him because Junior might hear about God. Oh, for crying out loud. I think it exposes something about the left, this whole Tebow controversy. And it exposes that for all of their talk about being open to different ideas and being open to people expressing themselves in whatever manner they see fit, they sure do hate it when certain people take up that freedom of expressing themselves and putting their message out there. That's what it all boils down to. They want certain people to be able to give their message to the mainstream. But certain people, certain other people, Christians, they want them kept as far away from a microphone or as far away from a television camera as they can possibly get. Because deep down they know that if people see a Christian, whether it's a football player, a businessman, or whatever, when they see a solid Christian who is successful, it shoots a huge hole in almost everything your typical liberal believes in. If you don't believe me, look at your TV shows out there and look at how many times you see uh, a Christian character when you do see one. They're almost always constructed to be some kind of hypocrite or something. They have some kind of a dark sign. You never see a, a Christian character in pop culture who is well-adjusted and normal and successful and is just one of the guys. You never see that. They're always supposed to be made to be a little bit twisted and a little bit odd. And so it flies in their face to see a Tim Tebow who's out there successful, doing well in his chosen field, professing his faith, and without a lick of hypocrisy to it. It drives them nuts. Now let's face it, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan, so it's hard for me to root for a Denver Bronco. Let's face it, I grew up thinking John Elway was the epitome of all that was evil. But Tim Tebow, go on with your bad self. Keep on, my man. This is America's Evil Genius. Have a Merry Christmas. We'll see you after, after Christmas before the New Year.